Hello, this is the star of the show, Shacky Shackleton, the explorer. Um, yeah, I know, you want to get down. He's been usurped a little bit by um, some polar bear looking uh, like dog named uh, Newton. But uh, anyway, I just, uh, he's doing well. He's getting, getting up there. He's quite old now. So in uh, the last video, I mentioned this article <coughs> uh, that just came out. 15,000 scientists warn society could collapse this century in dire climate report. Okay, so this is a, this comes out yearly, this type of report, and the number of signatures uh, increases each year. Uh, Bill Ripple is the main author. Um, so let's uh, talk about it, this video. Okay, so this is the Vice article. There's many um, press articles <coughs> about this paper, which came out with a splash yesterday. 15,000 scientists warn society could collapse this century in dire climate report. We are afraid of the uncharted territory that we have now entered. Okay, so scientists are warning that we are now in uncharted territory as a result of human-driven climate change in a new state of the climate report that was signed by, I think it's about 15 and a half thousand up to researchers now from 163 countries. The emphasis is on the current suffering caused by record-breaking climate extremes, <coughs> and the report raises the alarms about the possibility of widespread societal and ecological collapses in the future, while also decrying the recent increases in subsidies to the fossil fuel industry, which since COVID have gone way, way up. We had an opportunity to lower them. They dropped with COVID. We had an opportunity to keep them dropping and going lower and lower, but no, they've just recovered back to where they were and, and are surging past, in fact, where they were. So this report was just published a few days ago in the journal Bioscience. So it's the latest update in an annual series called World Scientists Warning of a Climate Emergency. So since 2019, scientists have been tracking escalating threats that warming global temperatures present to humans and ecosystems around the world. So Oregon State University ecologist William Ripple is the lead author. Um, he warns that 2023 was a particularly devastating year of extreme wildfires, floods, heat waves, and other natural disasters that are amplified by climate change. Also, this past July may well have been the warmest on Earth over the past 100,000 years, which is surely, surely a sign that we're pushing our planetary boundaries into dangerous instability. Okay, as scientists, we are increasingly being asked to tell the public the truth about the crisis we face in simple and direct terms, right? The, <coughs> you know, up until recently, people were, say, were saying, well, you can't, you got to tamper the bad news because people just shut off and turn away and stick their heads in the sand and do nothing. Well, that clearly hasn't worked at all, right? I mean, that was, that was utter nonsense, that concept. The truth is that we are shocked by the ferocity of the extreme weather events in 2023. We are afraid of the uncharted territory that we have now entered. For example, global daily mean temperatures never exceeded 1.5 Celsius above pre-industrial levels. And that's not the real pre-industrial, it's the pre-industrial defined as the 1880 to 1910 average or 1860 to 1900 average, something like that. <coughs> We've only, okay, so we never exceeded it prior to 2000 and only have only occasionally exceeded that number since then. But 2023, we saw 38 days with global average temperatures above 1.5 Celsius. So that was by 12th of September, you know, um, when, they, when the paper was being worked on and submitted to the, to, um, for review. But of course we know that September was crazy. So you can probably add another 30 days on to that number from September and into early October, it's still ongoing. So, you know, we're well on our way to exceeding 
that temperature for an entire year by maybe the middle of next year. So they've been monitoring 35 of Earth's vital signs. The authors like global tree cover, greenhouse gas concentrations, ocean temperatures, populations of human and livestock. 20 of those signs are at record extremes, which is up from 16 of those signs being in record territory last in last year's report. Okay, so natural effects like the El Nino and a 2022 eruption of an underwater volcano. So when a volcano erupts underwater, if you think about it, when it breaks the surface, it um, puts lots of water vapor into the atmosphere. And if the plume gets carried up into the stratosphere, that water vapor goes up into the stratosphere and uh, it causes, <coughs> it can cause a significant, um, you know, impact on the climate doing that. Um, there is a section on untold human suffering in pictures. Um, there's, um, you know, some discussion on specific events like deadly flooding in China and India, devastating storm in Libya. That's the storm that destroyed two dams, took out a coastal town, killed thousands of people and heat waves around the world. And uh, <coughs> The effects of global warming are progressively more severe and possibilities such as a worldwide societal breakdown are feasible and dangerously unexplored, the team warned. By the end of this century, an estimated three to six billion individuals um, might find themselves confined beyond the livable region, encountering severe heat, limited food availability and elevated mortality rates because of the effects of climate change. Three to six billion people. Okay, we're eight billion people on the planet right now. We warn of potential collapse of natural and socioeconomic systems in a world where we will face unbelievable heat, frequent extreme weather events, food and fresh water shortages, rising seas, more emerging diseases, and increased social unrest and geopolitical conflict. Okay. It's natural to feel overwhelmed by the enormity of the challenge, um, but Ripple and his colleagues offer several solutions. Uh, change your light bulbs, uh, don't use paper straws. I'm just joking. Of course, the team urged the global community to rapidly transition from the use of fossil fuels, even in the face of major geopolitical obstacles, such as Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Okay. Um, so we need more resources to fight climate related food insecurity, promote gender equality, as these efforts will reduce the lopsided exposure of more vulnerable communities to climate disasters around the world. The team also urged that key climate tipping points require constant attention due to the possible but less likely scenario of runaway or apocalyptic climate change. So they're recommending that the IPCC do an intermediate report um on tipping points and that would be a, that would be excellent if they actually go and do that um <coughs> okay so actually let's let's go i spent too much time on the this article let's let's go to the actual paper okay so this is the paper um it's open source um the 2023 state of the climate report entering uncharted territory so Ripple, main author, and Wolf is also at the, um, they're with at Oregon State University, Conservation Biology Institute, uh, Department of Forest Ecosystems and Society. Okay, um, William Gregg is also connected with the Oregon um, groups. Um, and then there's Joanne Rockstrom. It says he's affiliated with the Potsdam Institute of Climate Impact Research in Potsdam, Germany. I think he was a, he's ahead of it, or he was. I think he still is. Thomas New, uh, Newsom um, is, a, is an Australian, University of Sydney. Beverly Law, um, Department of Forest Ecosystems and Society um, at Oregon State Uni OSU, Oregon State University, I believe and the CBI, the Conservation Biology Institute. Yeah, OSU is Oregon State University. Luis Marquez is um, uh, Brazil. 
Timothy Lenton, you've heard that name probably. Uh, he's affiliated with the Global Systems Institute at the University of Exeter, right? He's been doing work on tipping points for, for a long, long time. Um, Chai Zhu um, is in China. And we also have uh, Salim uh, ul -Haq. He's uh, I've met him at some of the COPs. He's, uh, he's doing work in Bangladesh the International Center for Climate Change and Development in Bangladesh. Leon Simons is a Club of Rome guy in the Netherlands and Sir David King, who I've also met. He, he was the science advisor to the UK government. He's now um, with the Department of Chemistry um, at the University of Cambridge, Cambridge, England. Okay, so what are these people? Okay, so it's quite a an esteemed list of, of co-authors. Okay, so I'm going to look mostly at the <coughs> plots, but this is a very, very significant uh, paper, and it's not that long, 10 pages total, including references. It's a good read. Life on planet Earth is under siege. We're in uncharted territory. Scientists have been warning for decades of a future marked by extreme climate conditions because of escalating global temperatures caused by ongoing human activities that release greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Unfortunately, time is up. We're seeing the manifestation of these predictions as an alarming and unprecedented succession of climate records are broken, causing profoundly distressing scenes of suffering to unfold. We're in a different new territory, an unfamiliar domain regarding the climate crisis. <coughs> this is a situation that no one has ever witnessed firsthand in the history of humanity. Okay, so in this report, they look at all the different vital signs. Um, they uh, remember that, the, okay, so the first, it's building up on work from 2020. Um, a climate emergency was declared by many scientists. Um, there's over 15,000 uh, scientist signatories now. The trends reveal new all-time climate-related records and deeply concerning patterns of climate-related disasters. There's been minimal progress by humanity in combating climate change. So the goal is simple, is to communicate climate facts, policy recommendations, to scientists, policymakers, and the public. It's the moral duty of us scientists and our institutions to clearly alert humanity of any potential existential threat and to show leadership in taking action. Go to your local university and ask them what they're doing on climate change. You know, why they're not taking up this moral duty to, to talk to the public and reporters and policymakers because that, you know, there's people that are bound to be studying it and yet you hear nothing from them these institutions. What's the, what's their point? They're, they're, don't they care about the survival of humanity? Like it's, it's absurd. In 2023, we witnessed an extraordinary series of climate related records being broken around the world. Um, the rapid pace of change has surprised scientists and caused concern about the dangers of extreme weather, risky climate feedback loops, and the approach of damaging tipping points sooner than expected. Okay, and then there's lots of examples about heat waves, the ocean, exceptional heat waves swept, sweeping around the world, oceans historically warm, global and North Atlantic sea surface temperatures breaking records, unprecedented low levels of sea ice surrounding Antarctica. June through August of this year was the warmest pattern period ever recorded. In early July, we witnessed Earth's highest global daily average surface temperature ever measured possibly the warmest temperature on Earth over the past 100,000 years. Okay, we're just uh, pushing all of our planetary systems into dangerous instability, okay? Exceeding 1.5 degrees Celsius. It never happened prior to 2000. This is, a, this is global daily, okay? So the, it's <coughs> daily mean temperatures. 2023 has seen 38 days with global average temperatures above 1.5. That was by 12th of September. I, I would say the number is probably double at least by now, you know, here, as we approach the end of October. We're probably over 80 days would be my guess. 
Even more striking are the enormous margins by which 2023 conditions are exceeding past extremes. So July 7, 2023, Antarctic sea ice reached its lowest daily relative extent since the advent of satellite data, 2.67 million square kilometers below the 1991 to 2023 average. And I used that in my previous video because I said we were missing 2 to 2.5 million square kilometers. And this is, this is showing, talking about the peak. We might have reached a tipping point in wildfires, for example, with all these wildfires in Canada. And, you know, we're, we're getting, lots of things are connected to other things. Anyway, let's look, and it mentions the, the regulations on sulfur maybe as a possible cause. Let's talk, let's look at the figures because those are the most striking in this paper. So what we have is we have this year, Okay, so we have January to um, December. We have, this is a whole year in, across the axes. And each of these different lines is a particular year. Um, and the color of the line is shaded so that the darker lines are closer to the present. And then red is 2023. So this is Antarctic sea ice extent, million square kilometers relative to and then and, and the mean it's it's a relatively recent 30 year period 1991 to 2023 okay it doesn't go back uh okay so so <coughs> this stuff is happening you know here this is all recent data and we've just plummeted off a cliff here okay uh if you look here this is um so this is down one to two and a half down two and a half uh, million square kilometers basically below you know any other year this is global this is antarctic sea ice extent this is global sea ice extent you know tracking down most of it the loss here is due to the antarctic north atlantic ocean sea surface temperature anomaly um you know reaching this is 0.51 this would be 1.25 degrees celsius above normal here there's a, it takes a lot of energy to heat up the ocean that amount, All right? We know that over 90% of the global warming is actually heat going into the oceans. This is world ocean sur sea surface temperature anomaly. Uh, you know, look, it's uh, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.625, I guess, degrees Celsius. And that's from 60 south to 60 north latitude. So the darker lines are closer to the present. So you can see the whole trend creeping up. World surface temperature at two meter height relative to the 1850 to 1900 mean. Okay, so there's 1.5 Celsius. And you can see we passed it here. We passed it here in peaks, right? And as we continue through over the next year, you're gonna see this curve continue upwards and we're going it's taking us well above 1.5 celsius and the average for the year by the time we reach the middle of 2024 the the yearly average will i'm sure be over 1.5 c almost certainly and it'll be approaching 1.8 1.92 even this is cumulative area burned in canada wildfires millions of hectares it's i think it's up to even 18 now we're 18 and a half it's continued on um this was up it's continued on past this date okay so we're we're up we're up like an incredibly large burn areas and here's some more trends of course human population surpassed 8 billion people the the dates here it's 1980 to present basically on the time scale for all of these graphs human population you know, we've gone up, um, <coughs> we're well over 8 billion people now. The total fertility rate has dropped. Okay, so that should slow down the population growth rate, right? Not stop the number of people on the planet increasing, but slow down the rate of increase, the growth rate, the exponential growth rate. Livestock, um, look at the livestock. We passed uh, 4 billion individuals. Okay, so the if you take the for every human on the planet, there's there's half of a, a livestock. Okay, the number of humans just uh, is, is double that the number of 
livestock. You know, so we're eating more and more meat and we're consuming more and more and this has huge stress on the planet. Per capita meat production, kilograms per year, that's per person. You know, we're over 45 kilograms per year globally. World GDP, this is in trillions, um, current US dollars per year, uh, 60, 80, <coughs> we're, we're about over 90 trillion, I guess, here. Global tree cover loss, millions of hectares per year. Okay, we're still, we got to bring this down to zero. Okay, we're still losing, these trees are vital for absorbing CO2 and for producing oxygen. And uh, we're still losing global tree cover, but you know, at least it tapered down. It, it was less um, in the last few years. Um, Brazilian Amazon forest loss uh, is uh, still way too high, but at least it's not as high as it was in previous years. This is energy consumption in exajoules per year, oil. This is the COVID dip here. And, but then it's gone up again, Co oil, coal, and gas. If you add all those together, they're way up. Solar and wind is just not significant enough yet. I mean, it's increasing, but it's nowhere approaching. It's not, it's adding to the energy mix. It's not replacing any of these things, obviously, because these are all going up. Air transport, billions of passengers carried. Look at how much it dipped with COVID, and it's on its rise up again. Total institutional assets divested, um, divested from fossil fuels, that's been increasing. CO2 equivalent emissions, uh, gigatons of CO2 equivalent per year. You know, we, there was a dip with COVID, but it, it's actually recovered and su uh, superseded what we had before COVID, approaching 40 uh, gigatons per year. Per capita CO2 equivalent emissions, that's per person globally. So we're, it's about, uh, you know, it's near five, you know, a little bit of fluctuation, drop in COVID recovery. Greenhouse gas emissions covered by carbon pricing, you know, just pushing, you know, between 20, 25%. Okay, we got to get this up to 100%. Carbon price, dollars per ton of CO2 emissions and it's floating about 20 or so. Okay, so this price should be trending upwards as to, to as an incentive to reduce fossil fuel usage. Fossil fuel subsidies, I mean it passed it passed a billion US dollars, right? It's they're, they're, they're like look at the dip with COVID and then it's shot way up. I mean it's all we had a good opportunity here with COVID and we lost it. Governments that have declared a climate emergency, well, yeah, there's more and more that are declaring a climate emergency, but are they actually acting on it? Um, let's look at some other, there's lots of details about specific things um, in the paper, so ha have a read, it's not too long. I I'll just focus on the plots. CO2 still shooting up, methane shooting up, nitrous oxide shooting up, surface temperature change, uh, you know, we're, we're about... Uh, 1.1, 1.2, but uh, I just showed you that we're heading over 1.5. Earth's energy imbalance is increasing. This is uh, watts per square meter. I think uh, some, you know, we, we're approaching, we, we're, we hear, here's the trend and, you know, we've hit almost two watts per square meter. Ocean heat content ever increasing. Ocean's getting getting more acidic. Sea level change, uh, there is fluctuation, but it's still trending up. Minimum Arctic sea ice has come somewhat flattened a little bit for the last few years. Greenland ice mass, ever increasing Antarctic ice mass. Glacier thickness change, um, you know, we're losing thickness. These are in glaciers around the world. I think, um, you know, mountainous regions, etc. Area burn in the US. Uh, you know, pretty high. Took a little bit of a pause this year. I mean, it, the fires took off in Canada, but that didn't happen in the U.S. this year. Global tree cover loss due to fires. Uh, you know, the trend's been up higher and higher. Billion dollar floods in the U.S. Maybe a bit of a break this year. Extremely hot days. Okay, so there's all of these different time series. <coughs> there's images of the of human suffering. 
Um, there is recent climate related disasters since the last report came out a year ago. Um, things that have happened month to month. The list gets ever longer, of course. Um, and then uh, some of the, uh, the economics of uh, the total extraction by materi of ma different materials through the years, biomass, fossil fuels, metal ores, non-metallic uh, minerals, carbon dioxide removal. Uh, this is the total that's needed by 2050, 6.8 gigatons per year. Conventional land manage, might, management um, might, might help. And novel methods is almost non-existent. Coal consumption, China has taken off, okay? It's dipped in, um, it's going up in India, it's dipped in the US. And feedback loops are getting worse and worse. The prevalence of undernourishment, percentage of the world population, we made gains from 2000. Uh, you know, we had we had a minimum here. Of, uh, I guess that's about 2018, and then we've been ticking upwards. The vulnerability to climate change. The index. I mean, areas of Africa and India are, are the worst. Also, also South America. Okay, so basically, uh, you know, there it's a it's a great paper to have have a look at. So. The effects of global warming are progressively more severe. Possibilities such as a worldwide societal breakdown are feasible and dangerously unexplored. By the end of this century, an estimated three to six billion individuals, um, or eight billion right now, I don't know how they say, you know, one third to one half of the global population. I mean, what? One third to one half, well over that range, I guess, might find themselves confined beyond the liberal region, encountering severe heat, limited food availability, and elevated mortality rates because of the effects of climate change. Big problems need big solutions. We have to shift our perspective on the climate emergency from being just an isolated environmental issue to a systemic existential threat to humanity. Although global heating is devastating, it's only one aspect of the escalating and interconnected environmental crisis that we're facing, like biodiversity loss, freshwater scarcity, pandemics, you know, throw wars in there too. We need policies that target the underlying issues of ecological overshoot, where the human demand on Earth's resources results in over-exploitation of our planet and biodiversity decline. As long as humanity continues to exert extreme pressure on the Earth, any attempted climate-only solutions will only redistribute that pressure. Okay, we have to challenge the prevailing notions of endless growth and overconsumption by rich countries and individuals that's unsustainable and unjust. We advocate for reducing resource overconsumption, reducing, reusing, recycling waste in a more circular or donut economy, prioritizing human flourishing and sustainability. Climate justice, fair distribution of the costs and benefits of climate action is needed a transformation of the global economy to prioritize human well-being and to provide a more equitable distribution of resources. We need to stabilize and gradually decrease the human population with gender justice through voluntary family planning and by supporting women's and girls' education and rights. That reduces fertility rates and raises the standard of living. Okay, and as scientists, we're increasingly being asked to tell the public the truth about the crisis we face in simple and direct terms. The truth is that we are shocked by the ferocity of the extreme weather events in 2023. We are afraid of the uncharted territory that we have now entered. Conditions are going to get very distressing and potentially unmanageable for large regions of the world with the 2.6 degrees of warming expected over the course of the century even if the self-proposed national emissions reduction commitments of the Paris Agreement are met. We warn of potential collapse of natural and socioeconomic systems in, a world, in such a world where we face unbearable heat, frequent extreme weather events, food and fresh water shortages, rising seas, 
more emerging diseases and increased social unrest and geopolitical conflict. Massive suffering due to climate change is already here. We've now exceeded many safe and just earth system boundaries, imperiling stability and life support systems. Okay, so what else is new? And we're actually bearing witness very soon to failing to meet the Paris Agreement's 1.5C goal because we're heading to a much warmer world. And um, yeah, this is just basically reporting it. Now there is a uh, reference to um, supplemental data. Okay, um, so, you know, I went to this site and there's lots of uh, good uh, references and things. You can click on any of the references here. And there's a PDF um, here of a supplemental file. And there's lots of the details that are in the, from the paper, like the graphs and stuff. The data is here. All the different data on the different variables, um, very in chart form, um, different countries, new hydroelectricity and nuclear energy. So there's additional materials that aren't in the paper. Uh, CO2 emissions and sulfur dioxide emissions. Look how sulfur dioxide has been dropping recently, which is unmasking the, uh, the aerosol warming effect, the global dimming effect. All right, there's lots of additional information in, and references in the supplementary paper, just so that you know. Okay, so in summary, um, yeah, we're, we're facing uh, global catastrophe from uh, climate change. We're facing collapse of civilization. So it's a very important paper. Uh, make sure you have a look at it. Please considering also going to my website, paulbeckwith.net, and donating to my PayPal account to support my research and videos. Thanks again, and bye for now.